Hi, I'm Julia Chen. I'm a restaurateur living in the Cape Town City Bowl. My restaurant, Hallelujah, is situated right in the heart of the city. Over the last few years, the influx of young professionals has created so many new and exciting things to see and do. The rejuvenation of the city has been something really special to experience. Hi, I'm Julia Chen. I'm a restaurateur living in the Cape Town City Bowl. My restaurant, Hallelujah, is situated right in the heart of the city. Over the last few years, the influx of young professionals has created so many new and exciting things to see and do. The rejuvenation of the city has been something really special to experience. Hi, I'm Alan Footman. I'm a sports tour operator from Cape Town. My family and I have been living in the southern suburbs for 21 years. What we love about the neighborhood is it's very family orientated. Lots of things for the kids to do, uh, especially here where we are next to the farm where folk can walk the dog, go for runs and enjoy the fresh air. In the southern suburbs, we're lucky enough to have some of the top schools in the country. And on top of that, we have the University of Cape Town, one of the most famous universities in the world. What is a bank at a time like this? In a world filled with uncertainties, where lives are put on hold, business paused, and working together means... What is a bank at a time like this? In a world filled with uncertainties, where lives are put on hold, business paused, and working together means staying apart. At APSA, being a bank means staying connected. It means being a part of your future, providing relief at a time of need, and doing this through effective, secure online platforms. It means staying in touch when everyone else seems distant. Being a bank means knowing that we've come from far and are yet to go further. And that possibly this could be a time for a new beginning, an opportunity to reflect and rebuild. We are alongside you, helping you to finance your dreams and grow your legacies. We are in this together. Rigo Fela.
Sisoke. Once as Amal San. That is African Nasty. And welcome to episode 40 of the Private Property Podcast. I'm your host, Uzamantunga Kumala. We made it to yet another Friday. I don't know if that still makes a difference to so many of us who are in lockdown this level three. I even forget which level we're in. You know, I think so much time is spent indoors that we probably lose track. Now, it is, of course, Youth Month, and there's so much we can talk about, about when it comes to property and young people. As a young person myself, I love connecting with young people and talking about property, talking about some of the opportunities that are there specifically for us, and really how we can also collaborate. I think one of the things um, that, as young people, we love doing is working together and finding ways that we could, uh, you know, build whatever it is that we're doing in our respective corner. And on the weekly feature that we typically have APSA, we've decided to bring on a young person so that we can look at some of the opportunities that are there in the property sector. Now for this evening, we'll be looking at how young professionals can, you know, can start playing a role in the property market and looking at some of their sentiments around the market, what interests them and what it is that they're doing. And of course, you're probably wondering who I am speaking to. And of course, I'm joined by Untabiseng Mahabo, who is the chairperson uh, of the Cyber Young Professionals, as well as chairperson of Cyber Student Tap Chapter. And you're probably wondering what is Cyber. So that is the South African Institute of Black Property Practitioners. Untabiseng, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thank you for having me, Zama. So I think before we even start with our conversations, to viewers, to viewers at home, do send in any questions or comments, maybe a young person, you still you know, have a lot of question marks around how you can break into the property sector, whether it's as a buyer or an investor, or perhaps at a professional level. And of course, later on on the show, we're going to be announcing those two lucky winners who are going to walk away with that 1,000 Rand prize. You absolutely do not want to miss it. So I'm saying, People who probably don't know what CEBIP is, what they do, what is CEBIP, before we even talk about the young professionals, the student chapters and the work that's done in that space, what exactly is CEBIP? So CEBIP is the South African Institute of Black Property Practitioners, as you mentioned earlier on. It is a 24 year old advocacy group um, and it was created um, by really the legends of property in our country back in the 1990s and they really are tasked with advocating and facilitating for the inclusive um, growth and transformation of the property industry and that's what we do. We educate people about the, trans the, the property industry and we assist with transformation in the space. And you know, before we even look at the student chapter and the young professionals, what are some of the ways that uh, CyberP has essentially done some of the advocacy work or some of the projects that they have done over the years? So I can actually just touch on what's been happening most recently. So you know, with lockdown, a lot of property professionals were locked out of their ability to continue to do work, and CyberP was actually um, advocating for them to participate in earlier stages. So initially, you know, estate agents would have been I think starting at level two, and we were one of the groups advocating for them to, to start um, participating a lot earlier, particularly because, you know, a lot of um, estate agents are 
our, our commission workers. So a lot of people were left stranded. A lot of industries, you know, weren't working in our in our in our section. So we were advocating for them to participate. We were also advocating for members in the property sector to be able to access their UIF um, through cyber. So we definitely try most importantly to drive um, participation and to help our members be able to access the market efficiently. And I think we certainly do appreciate the work that Asaibu um, and other organizations uh, did in ensuring that property practitioners are able to work as early as level three. I know Sapo was also one of the organizations. We previously even interviewed um, the CEO of Growth Point around the, the formation that essentially as different big players, um, they came together and said they wanted to make sure that they somehow provide a cushion for the sector because it's very heavily affected, especially the commercial space. So trying to find ways to work with tenants and landlords, and this is commercial uh, tenants and landlords, in ensuring that they're able to weather this economic storm, uh, because the reality is a lot of them may not be at their offices because of course they can't access them because of the lockdown. And some, certainly the retail clients are already going to be there, but they might not be seeing revenues that are similar to when we are not in lockdown. So they certainly also needed a bit of relief from their landlord. So we've seen the type of work that um, organizations like Asabe and the role that they played in ensuring that um, certainly members of their particular sector are assisted during this lockdown and relief is provided as early as possible. So that's now essentially the mother body. Let's get talking about young people. Both you and I are young and we're quite passionate about property. I know that um, the Young Professionals I'll say Forum or the Young Professionals part of CYBIP was launched not so long ago. I mean, I saw the work on social media and I thought this is the kind of initiative. Like, it, when I looked at it, I was like, this is the content I signed up for. This is the kind of content Damn. I want to see you know, regularly. Maybe share with our viewers at home, what is CYBIP Young Professionals and what the, uh, the mission or the vision behind having young professionals as part of CYBIP be there and even launch, going as far as launching um, that particular part of the organization. 100%. So in order for me to be able to talk about the cyber young professionals, I have to take a step back and talk about our student chapters. So we actually started in 2017. That's when we launched our first student chapter. And that came out of a need of knowing that, you know, there were a lot of students that were studying property, mm -hmm. but didn't really know what to do in the industry once they had studied. We didn't have access to people that were in the industry. We didn't even know that people that looked like us existed in the industry. And so the point was to bring the industry closer to students. And we started off at the University of the Witwatersrand. We then went to the University of Johannesburg, and then we launched the University of Pretoria and the University of Limpopo. And once the, all of that was done, um, we realized that, okay, now we've left university and we've built all of these societies and all of these students are flourishing and they're uh, banding together and learning. But once you get into the industry, it's a bit quiet. You know, mm -hmm. the current bodies that exist are a lot older. So you get to a networking event and everybody is like 35, 40 plus. And I mean, 35 is still young, but a lot of them were much older. So if you're a 22 year old, just entered into the market, you don't have a peer that you can relate to. You don't have anybody that you can ask questions to. So we thought, okay, let's start. Let's create um, this, which, which gives us space to ask questions, which gives us space to be free, to grow and to create a community where we hold each other accountable, um, but also propel each other's careers. Um, then we realized that, but there's more to this than just, you know, us professionals in the industry. If we want to transform the property industry, we have to be aware of the fact that the people that are participating in it aren't just people that study property related degrees. It's everybody that is renting property, that is buying property, everybody that is interacting with property in some way or another is effectively somebody that we need to be talking to. And so when we launched, we thought we want to ensure that we propel the careers of um, our members as entrepreneurs, as employees, whilst transforming the industry and sticking to our roots. And that's who we are. And then, so what, what are some of the, or what's some of the work that certainly as the young professionals um, wing of the organization, you essentially look into doing? So like you mentioned, we launched early on in this year. So we launched in 2019. And from that point in time, we've actually been running a series of webinars. 
um, with the point of educating people about the property industry. So the first webinar that we hosted was around you know, employment and career growth, as well as entrepreneurship in the industry. And in that webinar, you know, we were profiling people in the industry. We were talking about the challenges faced in the industry and how you can career proof yourself to a certain extent. Thereafter, we started talking about, okay, now, how do you participate in the industry? How do you buy your first property? What do you need to know about buying your first property? And you know, we even had um, APSA in there talking about their product, the Young Professional product and how it worked. Most recently, we were talking about managing your portfolio. Um, and so we are more than anything educating people because an educated buyer and an educated participant is somebody that is far more valuable to the industry than somebody who's going in blind, blindly. And you can't really transform the industry with people going in blindly. So we want to ensure that, you know, our members and the people, the general public are informed and equipped to make the right kinds of decisions when it comes to property. I am joined by Ntabuseng Mahabo, who is the chairperson of the Cyber Young Professionals as well as Cyber Student Chapter. We're talking about some of the opportunities that are there for young people in property, whether it's uh, you know, something that you've studied, something that you're interested in, perhaps you're a property entrepreneur and you're a young person and really want to find a community of other young people who are in the space who can help you, whether it's, you know, in networking purposes, understanding the sector better, then this is the episode that you simply do not want to miss. And I think, you know, in terms of saying, I think as young people, we often, and we're even chatting offline, we often don't know where to start. Uh, I mean, you might perhaps already um, have a degree that you, you you studied. It's not in property, but you have an interest in you know stepping into the property uh, sector. Perhaps you know building your, your portfolio a little bit. What would you say are some of the best ways or potential ways that young people can get into the market? Certainly, as either buyers or investors. Perhaps not so much professionally, because I don't think everyone necessarily wants to go into property from a professional perspective, but certainly those who are looking at investing or buying um, or really making use of property as an asset class. So I love the question. It's a very important question. Um, I'll firstly start off by saying that because everybody in some way or another needs to participate in the property industry, because you'll always need a roof over your head um, to live in and to work in. Um, you all have to be educated in property in some way or another. So I would first start off by understanding why it is that you, by understanding how you participate in the property industry as a person um, and then knowing what it is that you want to do in it. So if you're trying to invest, start off by educating yourself. Understand what it means to be an investor. Understand why you are investing. Are you investing because you want capital growth? Um, capital growth being you want your property to be worth I don't know, 10 million rands in the next 10 years, then you need to understand, you know, the type of property that you need to buy. Are you investing because you want cash flow? You know, do you want money in your account every single month? Um, then you need to know, okay, I need to, to buy a different type of property, but you need to be able to have a source of that information. And there are lots of courses that are available that can help you with that. We as Cyber um, run courses, um, but there are things online as well. Um, your support was run things, but university runs different things. The University of Pretoria runs different things. So there is information available. It is far more important to make sure that you're informed and to make sure that you know what you're doing than to just jump in because property is an expensive exercise sometimes. If you're not going into REITs or something like that, investing in property can be very expensive. So you don't want to make the mistake of just going into something because you thought it was a good idea and you weren't prepared information wise. So I definitely recommend informing yourself first and then secondly, understanding your affordability. Can you afford to go into what it is that you want to get into? Um, and if you can, great. And if you cannot, can you wait? Because again, to my point earlier, property is expensive. And it's not the type of, um, it's not always easy to get out of a property related debt, so to speak. And I think that's such an important one. I think one of the big things, certainly a number of different guests that we've had right here on the Private Property Podcast have reiterated time and time again the importance of educating yourself, doing your research, using resources just like the Private Property Podcast to find out as much as you can about you know, investing in property or buying your first home before you sign on that dotted line because it's going to save you 
thousands of rands, especially if you, you know, are able to uh, negotiate, let's say an interest rate, less 0.5%, you're already going to have quite a massive saving over the years. Now, you know, Thompson, what would you say are perhaps some of the, the trends that you've seen um, from young people and or young professionals when it comes to, let's say, their, their renting behavior? I mean, we're often dubbed the the renting generation and for for many different reasons i mean for one the barrier of entry into the property space is is quite real um in some yeah. ways in south africa perhaps we're slightly more fortunate than some of our friends let's say in australia and the us and canada and the uk where property prices are and like shockingly high and yeah accessing those markets seems almost impossible that people end up staying with their parents until they are well close to 40. You know, what are some of the trends that you've noticed, certainly from young professionals when it comes to the renting and the buying space? It's interesting. Um, so as a young professional myself, I am in the space where a lot of me, people that I know um, are having to rent close to work because you don't necessarily want to live far. Traffic is a bit of a problem. So we're renting close to work, um, but also renting with people. You know, there are lots of people that are sharing accommodation because it's just, it's too expensive to live by yourself. Um, people are still living at home. People are living at home with their parents because again, it's just too expensive to live by yourself. Um, and if you do live by yourself and you do, do live a little bit further out, you know, there's the issue of having to travel, which is not always easy for a lot of people because that's additional debt in the form of a car or whatever it is that you might need in order to be able to get to work. So I think um, you find that a lot of people are actually eager to be in work and play spaces. So a Mobaneng, for example, is a good place for people to be. If you know that work is nearby, you want to be able to live there. You want to be able to walk downstairs and walk to work. You don't have to um, buy or own a car, for example. Um, but then at the same time, you know, if you were trying to replicate the same thing in a Melrose Arch, you wouldn't be able to do that because it's just so much pricier to do that there. So we're definitely finding that um, millennials and young professionals are money conscious. We understand that money doesn't grow on trees. And so we're trying to find ways to accommodate ourselves um, meaningfully and, and in good spaces uh, whilst saving money. We're going to go to a quick break and when we come back, we'll be exploring some of the different opportunities that as young people, we can take advantage of in the property space. Remember, we are going to be announcing that winner of the 1000 Rand Prize. We have two winners that we're going to be announcing. So you certainly don't want to miss that one. And if you have any questions and comments, I've already seen quite a few that have come in. Do keep sending them through. We're looking at opportunities for young people in the property space. I'm, of course, joined by Untabi Singh Mahabo, who is the chairperson of the Cyber Young Professionals as well as Cyber Student Chapter. We're going to be back just after this. What is a bank at a time like this? In a world filled with uncertainties, where lives are put on hold, business paused and working together means staying apart. At APSA, being a bank means staying connected. It means being a part of your future, providing relief at a time of need, and doing this through effective, secure online platforms. It means staying in touch when everyone else seems distant. Being a bank means knowing that we've come from far and are yet to go further. And that possibly this could be a time for a new beginning an opportunity to reflect and rebuild. We are alongside you, helping you to finance your dreams and grow your legacies. We are in this together. Regal fail, sisoke. Once as Amal San. That is African Master.
welcome back to episode 40 of the Private Property Podcast. I'm your host, Uzamantunga Kumalo. This evening, I'm joined by Ntabiseng Mahabo, who is the chairperson of Cybib's Young Professional and the Student Chapter. We're talking about the different opportunities for young people in the property space and really some of the trends that they've picked up that as young people we are falling into when it comes to property. It is of course Youth Month and throughout the month there'll be different young people that we'll be profiling and speaking to and really seeing some of the incredible work that as young people we're doing in the property space. And I think one of the big things is for us also share some of the lessons that we've learned along in our property journey. Now, I'm saying, of course, viewers are sending through some of their questions and comments, and we'll get to them just now. I think one of the big things is perhaps, you know, if in the event where there are young people who are looking to, especially young entrepreneurs who are looking to get into the, you know, property space, um, are they able to access cyber young professionals? Um, I mean, certainly the student chapter, you'd have to be a student of that university. But how do people become members of cyber, um, especially young people, become members of the young professionals? Do they already have to be professionals in the property space or you can be you know, an entrepreneur who has an interest in property? How do they go about doing so? So you can reach out to us on our website. So saibpp.co.za. Um, there is a breakdown that explains how you become a member. No, you do not have to be somebody that studied property or somebody that is already a property professional. It is for everybody that wants to participate in the industry. And one of the nice things about being a member is that you get to know about um, our offerings, especially when it comes to educating people about property. So currently, um, we've just partnered with Carlo, who is the property coach. We've got a course running around, um, running right now, teaching people about how to become property entrepreneurs and how to participate in the property industry. So there are various ways in which you can um, participate and learn about us, but also you can find us on social media. We're very young, so we're very accessible on social media. We're on Instagram, we're on Twitter, we are on um, LinkedIn as well, as, as Cyber Young Professionals. And I think we've certainly posted those details right here for people who are watching on our Facebook page. So you can always go through to the post just here below and you'll be able to get all those details. Now, I'm telling you, I mean, this is the first week of Youth Month. And I know every year we, you know, we, we certainly commemorate what the Youth of 76 did. And we also put on the spotlight different young people who are doing exceptionally well in their various conversations that we have there around young people, um, whether it's in different sectors or about their careers, their opportunities or the lack thereof. And some people are like, why are we even doing this? You know, it should maybe just be business as usual. What would you say, you know, is the importance of representation of young people, especially in organizations such as cyber? So, Everywhere you go, young people are change makers. If you think about um, the youth of 1976, they were people who saw something and decided that, nope, this is not going to work for us. We need to make a change. And so even in the property industry, you find that transformation happens and change happens because of young professionals. Um, when I think about some of the trailblazers that I'm aware of in the industry, I think about the people who have created something called Deepify, for example, which is a financial um, app or, or rather industry that, that helps you um, rent property without actually having to pay for a deposit. Um, that's run by a young, a young man by the name of Victor Mota. There is Balisa Malloy, who's you know, working in Park Up. And so there are so many people that are disrupting the property industry and they're young, they're youth. We think different. We, we attack things a little bit more differently. And that's why our representation is so important. Things will remain the same if we don't participate. Um, things will not move if we don't participate. And so, you know, we are required to kind of shake things up every now and again. And I know people aren't always comfortable with disruption, but so be it. It is very necessary in order for things to move forward. And that's so important. Um, and, and certainly as a young person myself, I think one of the big things is we often, you know, complain about how as we're growing up, we're taken as young people, young people, young people, and you have to almost do a skip to, okay, now you're suddenly an adult and you must have all the answers whereas there was never really adequate opportunity for even that transfer of skills, right? So as we're growing up, as we're acquiring all these different skills, you certainly almost need, uh, whether it's mentorship, you need sponsors to be able to assist you on your journey. We don't want to wake up the day we're 36. So when we're no longer part of, you know, being classified as youth in this country, 
then have to you know hit the ground running by then you certainly want to have gotten comfortable in whatever it is that you're doing um, especially if you're thinking property perhaps by then you want to have already you know bought a few of your properties and learned a few lessons along the way that you can use as you're now you know entering the later part of your 30s and want to scale your portfolio or grow the particular property business that you have now let's get to some of the tips i think one of the big things certainly as young people is we like sharing our skills we like sharing the knowledge that we have and we certainly do use you know social media as you're saying whether it's twitter insta facebook to really share some of the resources and tools that we that are working for us um, in order to help each other out and make things better for each other what tips would you provide or give to young professionals or young people who are looking to um firstly to buy uh, so they've never bought and they're looking to buy. And then secondly, those who actually want to go into the property profession. So I'll start with the people that want to go into the property profession. And then I'll go into the people that want to um, buy or start participating as investors. If you want to go into the property profession, definitely educate yourself. Um, unfortunately, currently, there aren't very many universities that offer education um, and property education right now in the country, which is very disheartening. So um, it'll be your big universities, your Viz University, your University of Cape Town, University wow. of Pretoria, and that's, you know, University of Kuala Natal, and that's pretty much it. But your universities of Limpopo, for example, don't necessarily have that. And that's something that we need to also help drive to ensure that, you know, everybody has some type of access to education. But for now, those universities have existing knowledge. You can also participate in, in some of the courses that we offer as Cybib and some of the courses that are offered um, by other providers as well. Cybib has an entrepreneurship course um, with the University of Cape Town, actually. So we are providing access to education so that people can start participating. Then, obviously, let's move on to the investor. So if you are an investor, as I touched on previously, you have to know why it is that you're investing. And that's going to inform the kind of information that you're going to go looking for. So again, if you're trying to um, buy property for the purpose of capital growth, you don't necessarily want to grow a portfolio. You just want to buy something and own it and have it as an asset. Definitely understand that location, location, location is very important. So if you're buying somewhere where you want the property appreciation to grow, you need to know that you're expecting something to happen in the area. Property prices are going up in the area, perhaps because the health train is going to come or a shopping center is going to come or it's near um, the highway. And so there's access to, to roads or it's a gated community, for example. That's how you know that those areas are going to grow in property value. Um, then at the same time, if you're looking for something that has high rental um, yield, for example, then you're looking for something that's close by to employment nodes. That's when you know that, okay, there are definitely always going to be people needing to live there because they need to get to work. So you know that, okay, this is the type of place that I need to invest in because I want to be able to get tenants because that's, those are the people that are going to cover my rentals. But also, again, if you aren't able to necessarily go in and buy property, you can look into other things. You can go and invest in REITs, real estate investment trusts. These are listed companies that deal in property that you can invest in. So you don't always have to go directly into property in the sense that you are buying it, the physical asset. You can buy a piece of a property in the same way as you buy shares in any other kind of of business. And that's also a way of forming um, an investment in property. And you know, one of the questions that have actually come in, and if anything, we're going to certainly pick up on it on a different show, is around, uh, you know, Tepo Mokubudi, who says, hi, I heard that APSA has a graduate option or product with regards to home loans. I can't really remember uh, the name of it. And I know that you had briefly, you know, sort of mentioned it. I think it's that young professionals home loan. Um, if you could just tell us a little bit about it. So... My understanding is that APSA has this product that allows you as somebody that has a degree or is a, has a professional degree that you are then able to access their home loans division um, and get, you know, 105% or up to 105% on your bond 
um, to purchase property. They also give you wonderful perks such as reduced rates when you are dealing with attorneys, as well as um, a take a lot voucher to help you furnish your property. And so that's one of the ways in which you know industry is trying to ensure that they're putting keys in the hands of young professionals by creating something like that. Because, you know, as a young professional, you've just started working. So you still need to build a credit record. It takes a little bit of time. And so they're making that a little bit easier for you by really seeing potential in you now before you actually reach it. And Tepo, we're certainly going to have a different show where we explore that particular product, the different ways that it works, perhaps what some of the requirements are, because I'm sure certainly a lot of young professionals who are watching right now want to know because a lot of us search for different home loans that suit our needs as in terms of saying you know you've just started working and you certainly have other responsibilities and perhaps one of the the things that's your goal is to buy yourself your own property and so you certainly want to be able to choose the right bank but also choose the right product within that bank that will uh, you know help in in you fulfilling that goal of yours and ticking it off on that list and i'm saying we're going to leave it there for this evening thank you so much for joining us i think for any of our viewers at home who want to get in touch with Cyber, uh, whether it's the young professionals or the student chapter, their contact details are right here below. So you're more than welcome to reach out to them and really have a look at, I follow them on Instagram. So I'm always up to date with the different webinars that they host. And some of the topics have been quite insightful. I think they're very helpful. Certainly as a young person who's interested in property, you're able to learn quite a lot from different industry leaders. So I'm saying thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me, Zama. And I think over the weeks, we'll certainly, you know, reach out to Tabi Singh uh, and, and even perhaps interview some of the members that are part of Cyber. As she said, a lot of them are young trailblazers. We certainly want to be able to see what young people are doing in property and not just for youth month, but as we go on to the other months as well, really being able to see what young people are able to or how young people are able to take advantage of some of the opportunities that they are finding in the market is quite remarkable and more than anything a platform like this is certainly what they need uh, and what we need to be able to see the strides that they're making in the property sector now i did promise that we're going to be announcing today's winner of course that is the winner of that 1000 rand prize we're giving away to two lucky viewers at home and all they had to do was to subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, on YouTube. So you all you had to do was go onto YouTube, look for the private property um, YouTube channel. Uh, you know, you subscribe to it, take that screenshot and then share it. And you stood a chance of winning that uh, 1,000 Rand prize. And I'm going to announce the first winner. I always keep saying, I, mean, I wish I wish I could, you know, participate in these competitions. Uh, 1,000 Rand, I think, would go quite a long way given the fact that we're indoors and, you know, there's not much activity going on. Uh, but without much delay, the first winner and somebody that I'm sure a lot of us have heard before because I've read some of their questions. So a regular viewer as well. And that first winner is Stephanie Love Whitboy. Stephanie, congratulations. That 1,000 Rand prize is on its way. Uh, I, I almost want to slide into your DMs and say, maybe give me a little cut of it. Um, and of course, we did say it's two winners who walk away with that 1,000 Rand prize. And so the second winner of the 1,000 Rand cash prize is Alita Walsh. Alita, congratulations for that 1,000 Rand prize. And both of you, congratulations. I think this is a great way to start off your weekend. You know that you're going to be walking away with that 1,000 Rand prize. So I've used it at home. Thank you very much for watching us. We're going to be continuing with this competition. And I did promise that we're gonna find something something big when we go to, when we reach episode 50. So you don't want to miss any episode because we'll be announcing it right here on the Private Property Podcast. I hope that this weekend you're going to stay at home and stay safe. And we'll be back on Monday with the Private Property Podcast. But remember this weekend, you can watch Mandisa on the Developers Show. So that is tomorrow and Sunday. You don't want to miss it. There'll be beautiful complexes and estates that are going to be profiled. If you already want to put a few images on that virtual um, you know, vision board, this is a show that you want to be watching and looking out for, getting really great ideas about some of the features of the different estates that we'll have on. But until then, I'll be back on Monday. Hi, I'm Brian Kepper. I'm a 10 times South African motorcycling champion. 
My family and I have chosen to live in four ways. There's some really great suburbs in our neighborhood. There's a lot of families living in the surrounding areas in places like Lone Hill and Cedar Lakes. What draws people to Cedar Lakes is that it's so close to Broadacre Shopping Center, Cedar Square, and Four Ways Life Hospital. Lone Hill is a major draw card for many families. It's got some great smaller commercial centers and some fantastic schools like Crawford College. From an entertainment point of view, Monte Cassino really comes alive at night. There's so much on the go, and there's an incredible energy in the area. Our family just loves the fast-paced lifestyle that Four Ways brings. But honestly, the thing that attracted us most to this area was the active lifestyle that it offers. As a family, we've chosen to live in Four Ways because of the lifestyle and convenience, and this is our neighborhood.
What is a bank at a time like this? In a world filled with uncertainties, where lives are put on hold, business paused, and working together means staying apart. At APSA, being a bank means staying connected. It means being a part of your future, providing relief at a time of need, and doing this through effective, secure online platforms. It means staying in touch when everyone else seems distant. Being a bank means knowing that we've come from far and are yet to go further. And that possibly this could be a time for a new beginning, an opportunity to reflect and rebuild. We are alongside you, helping you to finance your dreams and grow your legacies. We are in this together. Once as Amal San, that is African Nestle.